This is the uh, office hours and stand up meeting for Open Research Institute for the 10th of September. And what we do is we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we have planned to do over the next week, if we have any roadblocks, uh, and if we need any any resources, uh, and just to share any sort of uh, things that we may want to do or that or I might want to know about. And uh, please uh, uh, lead us off, Paul. Hello. Um, I don't have much to report. Remote lab uh, came back up pretty much in the configuration it was before the additional hardware. Well, the hardware is still installed. I'm not trying to use it for anything yet because I had some difficulty getting that to play nice with the VMs. So I've got some more research to do and some experiments to run, hopefully uh, in a non-disruptive way before we try to turn that back on. Um, Otherwise, everything's cooking along. Yeah, thank you. Everything seemed to be working uh, yesterday. So so I went ahead and cloned the um, MSK repo for Opulent Voice and was successful in building it after I remembered to update the submodules. And then uh, thank you for, for helping me figure out the typo in getting the VM to or VNC server to come back up for Karapi. Karapi is where the Pluto is attached. Um, but because of some interesting choices by uh, along the way, uh, ChocoCat is where the uh, the firmware gets built. Uh, so the firmware image is ready to move over and to deploy. And at that point, then I can go back to the uh, application layer. Um, so it's just simple C code to exercise the uh, the device and and to to learn the new register map. So it's a very expanded register map for Opulent Voice, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the goal is to get this exercised over the air and sort of like establish control over the radio and to to move it to the point where it's uh, fully functional as the uplink uh, part of uh, Hyperia. So thanks for thanks for helping. I'm looking forward to the performance being a little bit better. Uh, I did time make on on everything and still taken uh, a lot longer than standalone PCs. So we should hopefully be seeing the opposite. We should be faster. So anything that we can do to get the performance uh, better would be welcome. Okay, let's go to Ken. I think he has some questions and some roadblocks. Hi. Um, yeah, I, uh, just uh, after Paul got the uh, system back up, I re-downloaded the ADI reference design and just did a, like a vanilla build. So I didn't add anything. Um, and I'm still getting the errors that I saw with the polyphase filter build, which is clock related um, error, error reports. It, it kind of goes in this iterative loop on one of the clock trees and then reports an error. Um, I pasted that into the FPGA channel, but um, that's the same error we've been seeing for quite a while now. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it was not there when we started. So I'm wondering at this point, you know, maybe there's a hardware problem. Maybe uh, we should somehow tear tear down that station and, and like reinitialize it totally. I just something something flaky about that. Set up. I one of one of the things I was asking Michelle is, should we consider buying like a second station? I don't know if it's good for anything else, but it would be useful to have A B comparisons when we have these uh, questions that seem to be pointing towards a particular, like somehow it might be a bad board or something. I don't know. Doesn't seem likely, but I can't. I'm trying to come up with anything else. You know, now this is basically an off the shelf vanilla bill. So, why would those errors that, like I say, I'm 90, like 98% sure they were not there when we were doing them when we did our first bring up? What, what's causing them to, to crop up? So, anyway, that's I'm not sure it's really stuck, but I, I don't like going forward with this error. So, I'm trying to. Just resolve it. I mean, there's a chance that the error it's, is might be able to live with it, but um, it's tough to tell what what the uh, implications of the error is. Can you describe the error? 
Well, it's there in the uh, FPG, FPGA channel. That's probably, I could paste it into here, but it, it's the last message right above the link to the Zoom meeting. You can see it there. Basically, it, it gives a, a buffer underflow error. Yeah, it's a CPLL receive buffer underflow error. Yeah, preceded by a bunch of OK reports, which somehow are presumably pulling from the buffer. I'm not sure, but. Uh, well, it's not happy with your JSD. It looks like that's where that's coming from. OK, well, let's see what we have in terms of hardware on hand. Um, we might have a ZC706 from Remote Lab South um, that we could ask for and get sent to us and then swap it out. There isn't anything to configure on these development boards. They're monolithic. Um, we could redo the card, you know, but it's just a SD card that's put in there. When you boot off a JTAG, all the brains come over from what you're doing. So every time that you um, boot over JTAG, you're reconfiguring the board. There isn't anything to switch or manipulate on it. Well, I'm wondering, is there, is there any sort of jumper that controls like a clock reference or crystal reference that might no. be involved? I, that would be... You know, no, there's no, uh, there's nothing that's manipulated with respect to clocks on the, on the board. Um, I mean, nothing that would cause JSD to be unhappy with you like there's there's nothing that i know of that that is configured um we can certainly tear it apart but tearing it apart is literally just unplugging it and you know literally unplugging the power and unplugging the the two network connections uh taking off the radio card uh and then putting the radio card back on so we can certainly do all of that um and we can go and and do the like bios testing there's a test a low level test procedure that we can do to make sure that that's working but that probably won't catch the sorts of problems that that you're suspecting so let's go ahead and just do all that um and then go look at inventory and see if we already have a zc706 that we can get here quickly um yeah, and maybe then... we could just kind of have a, a session where we talk about how the card is constructed and, and how these clocks are provided to the FPGA because it, the, the error is in the JSD, but I don't think it's really a JSD error per se, other than the JSD depends on the same clocks that, you know, there's, there's some fundamental, there's, there's, yeah, like this 49.152 megahertz. I, I think that's a, that's like a, a system clock. And then there's a separate clock that's used for the uh, JSD. So okay. I think yeah, there's separate crystals that. and maybe we could just trace it, trace it out. Okay. Let's try it. Understanding the clocks in a system like this is half the battle. So, cause it's a complicated and, and clock domain crossing is always something that screws people up with these systems. So yeah, we could certainly do that. Do we know what the status of 0x61 means? Um, at one point, I had tracked that down. I don't have it off the top of my head, but uh, it's supposed to return zero when there's no error. Yeah. So. so the zero, just for those watching, the 0x61 looks like the status code returned by the CPLL receive buffer underflow error. So it returns the a hex code of 61 twice it looks like it might be a clue yeah if you could track down again sorry sorry ken but if you can go ahead and revive that like what does the 61 indicate that might yeah. really help okay so that we're not on a wild goose chase looking at all the different potentials and, and I'm, I'm assuming that you you like Googled this and you put it in engineer zone and you're not finding much there. This is the same error that has been there. There's been other errors as well, but this has been like there for all of those submissions and they never really got a. 
I saw, I did Google that and I saw a response for one of your engineering zone ones. And they said that it, that it, have you tried proceeding with it and if nothing works, it said it, it should be fine. Someone responded that I thought that was interesting. Oh, that to ignore it, the error? To yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what the, yeah. the response was. It was like, okay. <laughs> Never a dull moment. And I think, I think he, it even had the analog devices uh, icon on it, meaning it was from analog saying that. Okay. All right. Well, hey, Ken, just yeah. go well, try. The, the I know, it, poor Ken. Ken's not the biggest risk taker with this stuff he's so careful and 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 we really appreciate that but in this particular instance just go for it man just try well it. effectively we do i mean this isn't the the end of but there's a there's an it's not necessarily an error message but it, it basically it it stops out of an init sequence it says bye which is oh, it's okay. not supposed to be yeah. returned um, yeah bummer okay downstream of yeah. this and yeah I remember that it didn't do that when it initially when it initially came up. So oh. the fact that it's it seems like it's aborting some initialization. And so that's why I haven't like just said, oh, I, I don't think we can ignore it. But well, I mean, swapping out the hardware is not a bad idea. If we and we may have another ZC seven oh six in stock, it's gonna be at Remote Lab South in Arkansas. Um oh. so, so let me see what I can do. Okay. That one wouldn't have the radio, though, would it? Yes, I think we do have another radio. I think we have a complete station. Okay. So we also have another 9371 and I, as well, I believe. So I'll I'll go and check the inventory list that we made and see if we can't get it swapped out. Now might be a good time to just swap out all the equipment. So I'll or bring it bring it all here. So I'll see what I can do about that. We talked about this a little bit last week, um, and it's. I think we're accruing reasons to to do this. So yeah, sorry for the frustration, Ken. Uh, but your work is is awesome and um, very anticipated. Um, I think we're getting closer and closer on the 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 uplink side to to actually being able to exercise your uh, your really super cool receiver. So. So thank you for persevering. I know that it can be um, a slog to kind of get help, but the modern sort of way to get help is that you get directed to a forum and there may be answers for your question in the forum that might be recent. They might be seven years old. Um, they might be three years old and still accurate. They might be two days old and inaccurate. And it's, it's sometimes really difficult to navigate through trying to get uh, technical and customer support in sort of the, the modern way so so thank you for sticking with it and and flagging all of this um i'll help however i can all right aaron you have the floor sure <laughs> so uh last week i was debugging the msk modulator demodulator and i had re originally reported that when i ran both of those on the fpga without going to the transceiver that i was getting no errors uh on the PRBS synchronization. And I thought that was kind of weird. So I dug in a little bit deeper and I moved it from from hardware into the simulator, XM, um, and to see what was going on. And it come to find out that in that configuration, in simulation, uh, in simulation and in hardware, that it was reporting no errors, but that's because it never started the, sy the synchronization because it was getting uh, zero values the entire time. So I'm still de debugging that. I'm trying to get to a place where the modulator demodul the modulation and the demodulator MSK work um, with no errors on hardware. And then after that, I got a little distracted. Uh, I was thinking from our conversation we had last week on the whole system as a whole, and uh, knowing that on the other side of the planet, uh, QO 100 exists, uh, I was curious to see how, how active the, that uh, bird is. Um, and I was looking at both the wide band and the narrow band and and obviously at, at the time in the evening times um, when uh, a lot of hands are active. Uh, and I was surprised to, to, to see that there wasn't a lot of activity on, on the wide band channel. On the narrow band, you can see a whole bunch of activity. 
Um, and then I was, um, you had mentioned that we would like to have a kind of like a spectrum view on a web page. So I was kind of uh, digging in a little bit to that, um, basically creating uh, a way to get the log power FFT from the receive side and be able to plot it on a web page. And I was able to find a uh, implementation of a uh, simple HTML5 that take that uses WebSockets to do that. Um, so I was hooking up um, all the, the, the pieces to do that. Um, it's still a work in progress. Um, but I guess eventually, I guess my, the idea behind that was that this will live on the, the satellite uh, and it will be on the receive side and be taking those samples in and converting them into a uh, spectrum view and then pushing them down. Uh, eventually I was thinking not maybe trying to avoid going into the arm and then back from the arm uh, into maybe the, maybe exploring the possibility of encoding that on the FPGA and create uh, baseband frames for the DVVS2 encoder directly and that that'd be shot out i don't know it was just a thought an idea um but that I, it's a, a distraction from the msk but I, I should probably go back and focus and uh on the uplink to get that straightened out before uh exploring other things um, it was a happy distraction <laughs> yeah no that's fantastic yeah i i, I yeah. totally get it that's a uh, and those are things that are going to have to be looked at and there's lots of opportunity for for some really good uh, elegant work. So it, that sort of work, the really nice presentation and making it a delight to use and and enabling the activity that we want to see. Um, it only happens when you think early and often and all along the way about the stuff that you're bringing up. Uh, so so uh, I, I know it may be a little weird to vote for distractions, but you know, if you see opportunity to to fill in and to to make a memo about something or to bring it up, then please do. Because that's yeah. the sort of thing that makes the system um, truly work. Like the getting the bits to match and making sure synchronization happens. Yeah, that's the that has to happen. The physical layer has to work, of course. But the best designed lower layers, you know, if you just throw them out there, then people won't use it, which that may be a factor in the wider band Q100 uptake. Yeah. You know, if it's not easy to use and fun, then people won't really do it. Um, so that's what we would like to see is more, you know, yeah. delightful, easy use and the sorts of things you're talking about, like like visibility into a system behavior, like seeing the spectrum. I think that we can kind of agree that the pan adapter approach to radio has has won out, you know, that seeing a time and time and frequency display that pan adapter style is that's really the the best way to look at radio. Um, and you can present it in other ways and you can just hand somebody a microphone and a and a you know speaker, but that's enabling that and making it uh, fast and elegant is is uh, that's worth its weight in gold, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. So I I don't know. So, I endorse your distraction. <laughs> okay, right. I got. I that's okay. It was, <laughs> for, you know, for speaking for myself, I was uh, happily distracted with the FCC stuff. Uh, with so a trip to DC for the FCC TAC meeting for, for for this term, um, and then the next one is late December, um, and then we filed a comment about the 900 megahertz uh, proposal petition for rulemaking from NextNav, and that took took some time and generated a lot of really good conversations and contacts with other people. So we're part of a, a pretty big and diverse set of folks that are weighing in on the 900 megahertz spectrum and in opposition to the proposed uh, rulemaking from, from NextNav, which would uh, redo 900 megahertz, arrange it in support of a single company's product, uh, and also invite in mobile broadband data to 900 so that that was uh, the, the, a lot of the last uh, week or so has been. And then the, there's uh, two other major uh, initiatives or uh, subject matter things uh, from the FCC TAC meeting. So the, I still owe some a lot of writing about those. Um, but I did get the 
the repo cloned, uh, the current updated one with um, uh, Everest and and Matthew's work, and got it to build without an without any errors. And then I haven't gotten it actually onto the Pluto yet, so that's what I'm hoping to do today um, before a bunch of IEEE stuff. So I'm very looking forward to to your results on the the um, essentially the error test. So it's you know bit error rate testing uh, what you're seeing because that low level, like at the hardware level, you know, not even going out to the air, that that part has to work before you then start uh, doing anything that requires the more complexity. So I should be able to to kind of catch up with, with where you're at, at least at a very rudimentary level, just exercising the um, design just directly through the registers and see. Um, so that's, that's kind of my goal is to kind of like report back and say, okay, this is a very rudimentary way of exercising it, but here's what I'm seeing and, and here's what I'm um, getting. So that's that's my report. Okay, hey, hey, Mike, greetings. Hey, please feel free, have the floor, weigh in and tell us how it's going and, and any updates you have for us. Well, hi there, can, can you understand me okay on this mic? Yeah, I sure can, you sound good. Okay. If, it's, if the dogs start barking, I'll try to mute it. Uh, oh, but, uh, that's, that's okay. We got birds in the background here, so so chime right in. Yeah, uh, I just saw you were on today and thought I would report to you that uh, you may remember a meeting we had, an AMSAT meeting about five years ago that, that you and I attended in, in Washington. And we were trying to get together with the University of Arizona to put together a satellite called CATSAT. Well, that satellite was launched in early July. And after being lost for a couple of weeks, uh, it was found and had some problems. Uh, but, uh, the university kids have been working through this very nicely. And we and got, got the battery charged and got attitude control. And one of the things that that satellite was supposed to do was transmit expand down with a DBVSB B to S uh, modulation. Well, we turned on the expand transfer last night and on the first try, you got a, you got a link to the satellite. So uh, it's a major milestone and we're very happy about it. Right on, that's great. Fantastic. What and the Wow, the students probably learned a ton from you said the you said it was uh you said it was lost for a while. That must have yeah, been something, uh something happened that nobody understands and it was launched by this uh Firefly rocket, uh which is a brand new rocket and it's had a few problems, but they're they're working through them. And we get, they got on orbit, the rocket did, and started to dispense satellites, except they didn't see our satellite be, be, be dispensed. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> okay, that must have been a little heart stopping. Some people uh, were, were concerned that it was stuck in the dispenser. But then so, somehow, a couple of weeks later, the signal finally was, was found. It did get dispensed, uh, maybe five days late. Wow. Uh, Nobody understands that there's some some damage to the spacecraft. Uh, our VHF, excuse me, our UHF control antennas uh, say that the, the signal is very weak at the, coming down from the satellite. Wow! And so we're, the, the university is working on putting a feed on, on a on a twenty foot dish to to maybe get a little better command and control. But in the meantime, it's it's been rebooting uh, sporadically for unknown reasons in the, in the power system. And so we have a damaged antenna perhaps and, 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 and these reboots that drive us fits to, to try to do any experiments, but, but it's, it's being worked on. The, the, the kids are, not really kids, they're pretty they're near adults, young adults, and they, uh, they're teaching me a lot. Wow. So, so the satellite is, is a, you remember we put an FPGA code on the satellite. It's not, it's not 
exactly what you guys are running in a historic ship like mad over over uh, uh for a little orbiter uh, that that we have to worry about but uh we're getting there wow that's a fantastic um update uh i know that the students are learning a ton uh and it's probably a little stressful but uh that's fantastic news um and closing the link is uh that's that's all it's about, really. That's that's a big success. And we have a F FPG on board that's programmed to transmit DDVS2, and also it's programmed to just transmit a, a low rate FSK uh, signal. So that we use that for detection and haven't actually actually turned on the DDVS DDVS2 yet. Um, okay. So, uh, so you got you picked up the FSK signal and we're able to acquire it. Right, yeah, we have a big negative power budget in our final amp power on the transmitter. Yeah. So we couldn't leave it on very long. Right. Wow. Well, I, I'm, that's, that's fantastic. I'm sorry that it, it had uh, some uh, challenges along the way, but uh, that the recovery sounds, sounds very exciting and looking forward to hearing more. So if you have anybody that's, in, that wants to, Try to, to try to mess with the VVSB. I know these guys are still uh, with with all these Doppler shift problems and and so on. Uh, if, if they contact me, I'll make sure they get a schedule. We we, we hope to have a, a final one of our tests is to inflate a balloon antenna that has about twenty dB of gain. Yeah. And we'll be trying to point it at different places on the ground to, to be able to close the link. Okay. So get uh, if anybody wants to try to try to to um, try to receive it, then to get in touch with you about a schedule. Yeah, it, it'll be take quite a hefty station to do that. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily yeah. let them do. Go run, running out to the store, start buying expand equipment. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, yeah, I understand. Um, do you know? Do you can, can you guess at the at the 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 challenge of the link budget? Can you, can you guess about the about well, what a ground station would need? We will figure. We we have a we have a twenty foot diameter uh, antenna on the ground, and we were figuring that we would get fifty megabits per second and close the link with it, with it, with that. So you scale if you scale from scale down from that, it, it, it turns out you're going to be run, running a, a a still a fairly large antenna that has to point fast. Okay. All right. So challenging. Uh, okay. We, we, can, we, can, we can drive. We can drop the rate down to to uh, 100 kilobits per second to make up for an antenna gain if if, if need be. Yeah, that might. Yeah, that most, most that might be good. Like a hundred to hundred and sixty is is achievable. That would be that would that would give people the best shot. But they'd still it's have to have a capable station. It's not not a small dish that would it do it. Like most of these these uh, commercial systems, uh, they don't like to run slowly. Right. <laughs> it's true. It is a little tricky. We found that out. <laughs> Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off and turn off the mic. All right, man. Here. All right. Wow. Okay, this is quite the update. We'll we'll uh, spread the word about this. So I think congratulations are in order for, for being able to launch this uh, satellite. CATSAT was delayed multiple times. Um, and, and we've been, been involved and, and supportive of it for, for quite a while. All right. Any other comments or questions uh, before we, we close for the day? All right, everybody. Thanks so much. We'll be on Slack. There should be some activity in uh, Opulent Voice this week as we uh, move forward on uh, figuring things out and getting to work over the air. And this will definitely involve, uh, this is a big iterative process to go try it and to test it and then go back and fix whatever we find. Um, definitely in the in the realm of of uh, being able to exercise the design and lots and lots of it has been worked out still a ways to go and as you heard the uh the other side of the equation the um 
this the uh, spacecraft side with the polyphase uh, filter bank receiver technical issues with trying to get uh, the the essentially the the block integrated into the reference design so we're we're not uh, we're not new to that problem that's a that's a difficulty that 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 we've faced several times this one seems to be a little bit stubborn so we're going to try to swap out um, hardware uh, fortunately, we we do have some inventory, and with a little bit of footwork, we'll be able to to rule out some sort of strange hardware problem. Um, so, thank you everybody so much for your time and effort. Um, you know, things worth doing are not easy, and <laughs> and all of this is definitely worth doing. So, it's a very powerful force for positive technical education, and contributes directly towards open source success. Uh, the direct beneficiary of all this work is the amateur radio and amateur radio satellite services, and uh, lots of, of future educational and professional development uh, stuff going on. So, see you all on Slack, and thanks so much. Thank you. Bye bye.